GNT show is intended for mature audiences. Parental discretion is advised. These are the voyages of the GNT show. Our continued mission to explore Star Trek storytelling, to seek out new worlds and interesting characters, to Boliga, where no show has gone before. Live long and prosper, bitches. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the GNT Show, episode 264. I'm Terry Lynn, and the guy who's messing me up, as always, is Gettysburg 7. Joel on True, citizens, and how are you all today? I'm fine. It's a, it's a misty day. So let's today, let's paint some clouds, shall we? So take out your porcelain white. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a little cloud. I'm going to put one over here, up in the corner. Isn't that nice? Happy little trees. Uh, what show is this again? <laughs> I forget sometimes. All that, what all I'm going to do is I'm going to put a nice warbird here on the ground. See this? It's a beautiful spot for a landing pad. <laughs> uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The next step would, to, that? would be to say, burst into song. Introduce Mikey. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morrow. I don't know. Good day. Uh, we don't know what's with him, folks. We really don't. Good morning. Good morning. Good Christian morning. I think, we broke, morning? I think we broke Nick. <laughs> we broke Nick. Cushman Zada says good morning. Good morning. Introduce Mikey. Good morning. <laughs> oh come on, dude! And there he is to my left, your right. <laughs> Sorry, I was distracted. Uh, my left, your right. Ceridium. Kabla. Yeah. How's everyone doing? Good We're great. Tomorrow. I'm great. I know it's been really? a few weeks. It's been a it's few been a weeks. Month. Hi it's been Nick. A month. Hi. Yeah, it's been a month. Nice long break. What did you do this week? Coffee Clutch. How was everybody's holidays? Well, what do you think of the new studio that we built with donor funds? <laughs> we promised them we wouldn't use the money on lots donor funds. Lots of neon. We just use them. Lots of neon. <laughs> it's like I imagine the inside of Jim Ferris's head to look. I know. That's funny. That's that's actually really funny. The Ferris Anomaly does send their love. Yes, they do. Right on. It was fun to hang around. Missed them. It was fun. We had a good time. It was a blast. We had a very good time. Um, and uh, Christmas was great. New Year's was fun. And now everybody's kind of getting back and it's raining cats and dogs here. Ouch. That hurts if you walk outside. I'll tell you, those claws. Mm -hmm. Yeah, watch out for mm -hmm. the poodles. <laughs> I would more watch out for the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the Great Danes in the Irish wolfhounds. Yeah, oh, really? No kidding. Yeah, but you don't step in a poodle. I get it. I get it. <laughs> Yay. Do you want to be ejected well, I... out the airlock for staying back? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, our listeners will hear that um, the show is the three of us. We're kind of getting back to the brass tacks of the show, and that is uh, Nick, Mike, and myself. Not to say that we have uh, I really had to fired fight. anybody. I had to fight for my <laughs> position. They were Nick was arguing for just him and Terry, the original original. Well, I don't want to say anything, but it was a very close contest between Mike and Janet, and it was only Mike's skill with the on wound that won him out. <laughs> Damn <That's> straight. <laughs> um. So for those of you, um, we're just going to make the announcement now. Alan will join us whenever we have something specific to talk about. If we are going to be doing any polls Papa. or if there's any kind of segment that we would like his input Lady in, he Papa. said he would be happy to join us. I said Papa. I... <laughs> He's listening in too. Papa. And, uh... Hi, Alan. <laughs> and um, for those of you, who do listen to our show for 
what has been an amazing segment called Semantic Shenanigans. Um, uh, more than a month ago, we spun off Semantic Shenanigans for their own podcast. And we really want them to be able to fly on their own now, which is exactly why we... We're taking the training wheels off. We took the training wheels off and we are supporting Semantic Shenanigans on their own. So if you want in-depth coverage of the Axonar lawsuit and any other um, business, business and fandom collide, please take a listen to Semantic Shenanigans and follow up on Janet's blogs over at their site. So the links to their site will be in today's show notes, but you can always get them. It's semanticshenanigans.com, isn't it, Mike? Yes, it is. Yeah. Uh-oh, you're in trouble. Semantic Shenanigans. There is some brief news in the Axonar case, and that is um, motions and limine be filed, and um, that's really where the judge gets to pretty much lay down the uh, the rules of combat, so to speak, for trial. <laughs> Thank you. We should Very both be well scared played. by that, Mike. It was in stereo too. <laughs> um. And Janet and Jay Galloway says that, that Janet does a great job, but he loves ours and our feedback to her statements. Um, we appreciate that very, very much. And it's not like we're sending them on their way permanently. To be honest with you, we do expect to have Janet back to do um, a, a segment probably on a monthly basis, um, whether that be Axonar related or Dr. Seuss related or any other case that affects Star Trek specifically, we'll have her on. Or if there's something that may affect uh, the Star Trek realm, we'll have her back on. It'll be periodical. But, um, it'll be all right, periodical. People, here's the truth. It's, we didn't want no juice weekly. stinking up our show, all right? Oh, my oh God. Oh, my God. Nasty, nasty. And that was going to keep me from being elected. <laughs> exactly right. No. Oh, Janet knows better than Janet that. would kick you in the arse for that. That's right. So, yay. It's, we're kind of back to the, the, the I thing. I got tired of hearing we're about, also... oh, I graduated. Oh, I graduated. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And She's that's the other thing. The, the poor thing did graduate. She has a real job, and she has this life that she really needs to She has to, so, so much going on. And Ooh. seriously, we were, like, interfering with her health. But seriously, it it was getting bad. And I, and I thought... And we really did want to, like I said at the last show, there were some changes that we needed to make to kind of bring our show back to the way, um, to re-enliven it is the best way of putting it, to kind of give it some oomph. And so we thought, you know what? we I was there's, flattening there's out my ridges from all made. the head desking. <laughs> what? And he, he head desked. And so his ridges, his Klingon ridges. They were start, starting to go flat. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, and so we're going to, uh, so we're going to make a few changes. And uh, like I said, bringing us back to the three and then uh, kind of lightening up a little bit on the Star Trek news to cover. Not to say that it isn't um, interesting. But to be honest with you, we miss actually talking about Star Trek. And um, while some of the news is great and things that would trigger conversations, that's kind of what we're going to use it for. It's not going to be just regurgitation of other people's links all the time. We also are starting a new segment called the Sacrifice of the Week, where we sacrifice a random baby. <laughs> of course, it's wearing a red shirt. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, this one was taken from a farmhouse in West Virginia. I've had it for three days. It's it's a little sluggish, but oh my gosh! Yeah. <laughs> what? I don't think that's what you meant. Uh, uh, I I didn't approve that. Oh, yeah. I'll just enjoy my wheat that was just delivered to me. <laughs> oh man! I know, right? That's nice. Sorry. Let me just say it's a new year, and let me just say I love my wife. <laughs> 
Oh, very cool. I'm jealous. Ooh, I don't want cream of wheat, though. I, would, I wouldn't mind another cup of coffee. That was not brought me, but I, I cracked a Coke <laughs> open earlier, so. Oh. Oh, are you one of those early in the morning soda oh, As soon as I wake up. Really? Yep. At work, I will have a Coke and a coffee. Okay. Isn't there more caffeine in a Coke? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Probably why so, I lose my foot in three weeks. So someone, <laughs> so someone needs to invent like a carbonated coffee for Nick. Well, they do. They, there's. Don't, I was gonna say, don't they have that? Well, oh, do they? I don't think those, that that partnership thing with Red Bull. But I'm just too scared to try them because I remember a couple of years ago, Kevin and I, um, my late soldier there, Kevin and I were. Oh my God, Robert Reyes! I know. Oh He's my God, that's too went, far, what, dude. He that to stand in the corner. That has to be a typo. <laughs> No, no, not with him. He's a sicko with his red sweater. <laughs> Choice energy, baby. <laughs> well, but yeah, the so one I thing we can always count on is, drink, is... And I thought I was going yeah. to die. Really? Oh, I, like, my heart oh, was racing. Oh, that's not cool. Oh, that's yeah. not cool. Okay, Horta Baby, that's, that's funny. Not... Horta Baby, that's funny. Um, one thing you can always take a comfort in is that... When you think Nick has gone over the edge, the chat room takes mm-hmm. it further. Oh, my God. Uh, Jay um, Galloway says uh, he's looking forward to more GMT show talking Trek. Plus, he misses the Ask Dayton yep. segments. Well, then, exactly. if you miss Ask Dayton, why don't you send us questions so we can get them to him Please. so he can answer and we will do them on the air. That's right. And we are also... Actually, and as Jay Galloway said, he misses uh, coverage of Star Trek novels and more insights on Trek from the three of us. Really what we're going to get back to. Um, so thank you. I'm glad that you guys agree. I'm glad that um, we're um, kind of getting back to, I don't know, just the, the, the basics, the, what made us want to do this show to begin with. And, and that's um, pure hatred. That's right. We just hate everything. We just, oh my God. Dark chocolate covered espresso beans. Chat room is making me all hungry. I do want to say hello to Andrew Gilmore. Yes. I had no idea that was his name. You didn't. I had no idea that he played for Pink Floyd. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's too funny. But yeah. I did not know that was his name. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you did. I did, but yeah, I knew because we, I maybe it's told me in. Uh, he letters. might have told me. I just never listened to him. <laughs> yeah so um uh, but yeah, yeah he got he got hit as well with uh facebook saying no fake identities no fake names right yep. how do they know that nick Minetti is my real name and not an alias more importantly i'm looking at the name of cushman zada if that there was ever a fake name right right <laughs> But that's not his name on No, Facebook. I know. No, but how do they know that Robert Reyes is Robert Reyes' is real name, that he's not using an alias? Well, they don't, until they get the reported and said that you're not who you say you are. And that's why Mikey got booted off Facebook until he could I, prove I who think he was. I think we should Mark Zuckerberg. I it, but because I was reported, that they still decided to punish me. I think we should report Mark <laughs> Zuckerberg's name as being fake. Fake name. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine if his own algorithms bit him in the ass? He got, he, you just know they have those protections in place. Got booted. Mark Zuckerberg got booted from Facebook. That'd be hilarious. Funny as hell. Oh, well, we're, we are going to kind of talk briefly, and I do mean briefly, about some of the things that have occurred over the past couple of weeks uh, with regards to Star Trek. What's new in the Star Trek universe? general news there is some news that's out there for um not just general news but all of it so we're not really going to be doing the big breakdowns like we did before um there is a couple things that might spark some conversation here which i think is me however i do really want to send a shout out to pretty much all 2500 so or more people that are currently, and I believe today is the last day. I think they, they, they deboard this morning. Uh, the people who were on the Star Trek cruise. Did you see any of these photos, Nick, of this cruise? Not the oh, I didn't want to. Oh, oh, you didn't want to. It looked amazing. And I also want to send a shout out to John Van Sitter. JVC in the house. 
congratulations, Mr. Van Sitters, to you and your lovely wife on the renewal of your vows during the Star Trek cruise. Awesome. I know. It looked really cool. He he was all... And then there's a picture of him looking like L.A. Swarth. It's like Nick, you know how... You know, you know how awesome James dresses. Oh right? yes, Kerwin, right? Swarthy. So, so swarthy, right? Is that that with that kind of hip LA look? Uh, there is a hilarious picture of John Van Sitters in that kind of awesome hip LA look with a Gord mask on. Oh, awesome! It's hilarious. oh, that's a mask. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> But the pictures to this thing, you guys, you have to take a look at them because they're amazing. They actually really did a number on the Norwegian Pearl. They 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 really did a beautiful job of kind of updating the look of the ship. They put turbo lift stickers on all of the um, elevators, changed the signage. They had Klingon flags behind bars. They had a huge 10-foot horgon next to the pool for the big party that they oh, had out there. Oh, that isn't suggestive. <laughs> what was that? Now that isn't suggestive. Oh, at all. Not at all. Awesome. But it did. It looked like so much fun. And congrats to everybody who got to go. And um, the next one is next year, January of 2018. And you can head over to Star Trek, you know, just Google Star Trek Cruise or um, and, and check it out. George, uh, William Shatner was the headliner this year. George Takei will be the headliner next year. Why won't they do it together? <laughs> Gee, I wonder. Oh, man. Gee, I, I, I really wonder. Uh, then the other news I really wanted to talk to on was Star Trek Online, and that is the Zenkathy are coming. They look cool. They look cool. I think they look awesome. Very unique. Did you see them, Nick? I did. They look like giant and bags of water. <laughs> did did they kind of? <laughs> they do not. To me, they do. They do they, they look giant like bags. They look like they giant look bags like... of water with arms and legs and a, and a and and a, almost like a duck head. I don't know. It reminds me of a duck head, but I like it. I they they kind of um you know it's funny is that the very first time I ever read anything with regard to the Zen Kathy it was an actual uh, fanfic. That was written by um, one, of, essentially one of my favorite uh, fanfic writers. He does a lot of um, uh, how do I say? He writes about an El Orion that just kicks ass. He's like a mercenary. He's fucking awesome. And he wrote about the Zen Kathy Wars and how his character was a veteran of the Zen Kathy Wars. And so he writes about a few of the battles with them. And so he wrote them kind of like the only mix I could think of is like um a predator slash kind of rhino looking thing. And, um, uh, just, you know, they're just fucking mean. And, uh, the, 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 the artwork that came out from Star Trek online kind of didn't clash with that mental image I had of them. I just wish they'd bring in the Holy Order of Kinshasa. Oh, what do you think they look like? Well, they're birds. Are they? Yeah. They're, well, I mean, I mean, I mean, I guess my question is, do they look like hominid birds? Do they do they? Or like do they birds wear? Of prey. I always pictured them looking like hawks or eagles. You did, okay. yeah, but with the different colors and plumage and everything. They they okay. look they look like score from the animated series. That's possible. That's possible. Yeah, I can see. And that. and if you uh, it, it might that, that, the animated series. That, that episode w- with them, there is that whole religious aspect to it. So it could very well have been that what inspired the can yeah <laughs> them. yeah those people <laughs> i just want them in the game so i can hear aya <laughs> see don't they, they, yeah i mean they, they I to know. me the the, the zinkethi i mean they've got the the, the bat the, like they've got certain areas that look like they could be very fuel uh filled with fuel with with with, with water with liquid it's just they've got this harder skin over it in somewhat literature but i i I like in the books how how they're like just basically bags of water but uh so to me that that's kind of what i wonder if they pop that's what i want to know when you shoot them what's wrong with you i don't know 
<laughs> I wonder if they pop. Mike, Mike, are you a new bed? At the moment, I'm not on the new bed. <laughs> um, Matthew Anderson ha- said Halo rejects. Well, I don't play Halo, so I wouldn't know. I don't know. It, they, they. All I can say is that they kind of look like I always imagined them to look like, and I'm excited about that. When does the new um, content get pushed, Mike? Do we know? I haven't been able to find a date. Did they announce it yet? Um, I think it's for. Isn't it for the anniversary? Yeah, it's for part the of season the anniversary. twelve. Matt, Matt Matthew and this is January twenty six. Oh, so next week or the oh, week after that? Jesus. Okay. <laughs> well, it, it, it'll it, it'll be here sooner than 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 we, before we know it. Ah, I can't speak today. That's um, okay. By because... the way, I have a new obsession. Oh. Well, someone told me that I was like JD on Scrubs, <laughs> and I had never watched Scrubs. Oh, that's right. I'm now you at the end of season it. four. <laughs> <laughs> and you love. And it. I am a lot like JD. <laughs> <laughs> And that show, you know, to be honest, I haven't seen every episode, but every episode I've seen, I've I liked. laugh out loud at least once in every episode. Mm-hmm. It's funny. It's a really funny show. And and talk about the show that actually defines bromance. Oh my God, yes. But I want to be Doctor Cox. Oh my God, he's so funny. <laughs> I'm gonna break this down for you, there, Lucy. <laughs> He's such a great character. Yeah, and that's the thing. Everybody, even even really minor characters on that show, are written well and have like depth. Like the one kid, Doctor Murphy, who kills all of his patients, and he discovers his calling is working in the morgue. <laughs> hey, right? Because he's what, really good at diagnosing. Thought... You know what killed him? Because he's killed so many patients. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> so bad. I always thought that's why I wanted to be a coroner. My father was a physician, and I thought, oh, that's really cool. I could do that. I want to do that. And then I thought to myself, but I don't really want to hurt anybody. So what better thing to do than to be a surgeon on dead people, man? be awesome. I'm a podiatrist. No. Have you ever seen infected ingrown? Uh, well, I had it. I had yeah? it ingrown on my big toe when I was in Bosnia. It's oh, it was horrifying. So gross. And I, so I'm going to guess that if you don't want to be a podiatrist and proctologist is just out of the question. <laughs> All I could think of was that my 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 friend, my first this boyfriend in high school, who's who's currently <laughs> dentist and and a professor of dentistry at USC. He he went into pre med because he wanted to be a, a um, an OBGYN. Oh, figured out figured out real fast that's not what he really he he, he yeah. changed his he changed his tune after that there like, are some dentistry instead <laughs> horrific stories out there about that field of science <laughs> yep oh yeah it's horrible i don't know how people it is i shouldn't say it's horrible it's really awesome if you can deal with the horrible well, that comes and with I it. I don't mean this to be funny i, I mean this and, and terry i think you and i talked about it after my my last surgery like, how does one make the decision to become an anesthesiologist? You know you want to go to medical school, but where does that, or, or the podiatry, or the, the dermatology, the, you know what you I know, mean? It's where, where? Oh, when, when that, decided, yeah, well, my dad, he was, he wanted to go into psychiatry, and he was a psychiatry uh, resident, and then switched, and then went in and did some additional, um, proc- what they call proctoring. Um, and went into general surgery instead um, when he realized that psychiatry just wasn't for him. It was probably, he said, he said third year of medical school when he decided to switch. One of the things I love focus. about the show, too, is that the nurses get their due. You know, yes. I'm a big advocate that nurses are extremely under uh, under underappreciated by our culture when they do it all. Yep. It's true. And one of the reasons... I still like um, the way that at least in in TNG and later that some the way that some of the nurses get their due. Oh yeah, um, what's her name? Uh, Alessa. Mm-hmm. She rocks. By the way, Jay Galloway posted a picture of the NX reset. Yeah. That's also going to be in Star Trek Online. Um, it was really sweet to see Doug Drexler's response to 
the appearance of the ship in the game. Uh, did you see any of his posts? No, Nick? no. It was very sweet. Um, he uh, actually retweeted or reposted it and said, look, my NX refits in the game. And uh, a nice conversation between him and Tom Maroney. And I saw really somebody fun. that was talking about so, Discovery, and they said that they were, you know, they're looking forward to it, but they're sad that it's yet another prequel that they wish they had actually gone forward to, like, when the Enterprise J was there. And I thought about it, and I thought, yeah, that would be interesting, but it's too bad that I wouldn't be able to watch it. <laughs> That's just I despise the Enterprise J so much that oh. I would not be able to watch it. <laughs> I love her so much. Why? It looks like a piece of paper so that they cut pretty. out. I think it's so pretty. How? It's anorexic. Oh, it's so pretty. Matthew, it's put, up, put up the Enterprise J. And the and and the, the new news that Doug Drexler that it's coming out that they got it done for the um star the Starships collection Eagle Moss oh it's really so pretty oh it's so pretty okay Snowman oh my Cross God. that's a cool idea Sto should do a season five of Enterprise <laughs> you know who should do a season f- you know what there is a challenge for the Foundry there you go do Terry. A season what, what's five. special about that isn't she pretty? no. It looks like somebody ran over a model. <laughs> like, when I saw her in the Enterprise, when I first saw her, I had an audible gasp because I thought she was so amazingly beautiful. I had an audible gasp too oh, because my, God, I it, love that my colon hurt. It looks like a record. that Jim Ferris would love it. Yeah, exa- thank you, Mike. It looks like somebody ran it. it over. Yeah, it does, but I still love her. I really do. The model is beautiful. I'm really excited. That's very cool for them. I'm I'm happy for them for that. Yeah, because there was a lot of engineering that had to be done because of, you know how the struts are so thin. Yeah. Right? And um so Doug Drexler who designed it wasn't sure they were going to be able to engineer it and come up with a a viable kind of option and they did it. They were able to do it. So the new um model in the game in case, or not in the game the model in the for starship collections is there it's so pretty in case you're wondering people i did tell Doug drexler to his face that i did not like the enterprise j and when i woke up the next day i did not regret it at all well that's okay. when i came I'm out of my coma you. from him punching me in the head <laughs> no remember what he said he was like hey it's not for everyone right that's exactly right he's well i mean and he he's understood also the why sign of an artist but he understood why i didn't right and then he punched me in the face. No. And then he punched you in the face. <laughs> and then Gertrude Stein punched me in the face. <laughs> I think she's so pretty. So Gertrude I'm excited Stein? about Really? No, I'm excited about the Enterprise J coming in the Starships collection. There it is. Isn't she pretty? It's just too uh, thin. I love it. It, it I know, really does. It, it, so Mike, help me out here. It looks like it's made out of Play Doh. It doesn't look like it's made out of Play Doh. How thin it is? Yeah. Remember, there's no wind in space. It doesn't need to have big... Um, well, but hold on a second delicate. there, Chief. Mm. Mm. They've gone through solar storms and magnetic storms and ion storms and all of this mm. where there was wind, if you mm-hmm. remember. But just think Stellar about it. This wind was, what, 200 star- years? This is supposed to take place, what, 200 years so the after? Will, 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 no, no, no. It's the 29th no, century. I say, exactly. So 29th century is hundreds of years to improve technology and metallurgy. Thin is still thin. Yep. Son, I don't know if that's a compliment or not. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Take it as a compliment because that's freaking hilarious. I don't know what that means. And I'm not ranting. I th- okay, people said that they missed this. I'm no, not you're not. Quiet. You're not ranting. I know. You've heard me rant. I don't get it. I'll rant if you want me to rant. I was going to say, I've heard you rant. Rants. I'll rant. I'll get in there and rant my ass off. <laughs> <laughs> How do we not win awards? I don't know. No, oh, I do know. You know what? Um, we can we can give ourselves an award and then say we're the winner of twenty eight awards. And and <laughs> you mean? <clears throat> Go ahead. You know it. You know you want to. You, that's you, you, I was no. You, yeah. Right. Right. Create our own convention mm-hmm. and then say we win the convention. Oh yeah. I, Mm-hmm. Um, so I get a question for oh, both of you. Yeah. Today is January fifteenth, twenty seventeen. Yes. For Michael Hinman. 
Oh, that is true. <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> looking, oh. looking at you, big guy. Who's that? So. Grab the remote. Star Trek's on. Television news. With a new show coming up, which is still on on deck from May, I believe. Um, Star Trek Discovery has announced, of course, over, over the past few weeks before, and nothing really since we haven't had a show. But um, there was an interesting thing. Did you guys, you know, Doug Jones, right? You know that he's he was the guitarist for um, the Clash. <laughs> he was what? The guitarist for the Clash. Oh, that was Mick Jones. Oh, never mind. Sorry, I my brain just sorry it went somewhere else. No, J- Doug Jones, who's famous. For Being playing, in the monkeys. Ooh, no, that's that's Davy Jones. No. Um, for having a locker under C. That would be Davy Jones. <laughs> no, Doug Jones, who's famous for playing very heavily made up aliens in all sorts of different movies and TV shows, also is going to be a heavily made up alien for Star Trek Discovery. Um uh, He's actually a really cool dude. I've been following him on Facebook and on Twitter for a long time. He was uh, interviewed about his new character, whose name is Saru, I believe is how it's pronounced. Saru (laughs) you. I'm excited. I'm excited to to see him get some work because he's an amazing actor and it's going to be neat to see him uh, play yet another alien. Uh, but it's supposed to begin shooting next week on the 24th. So yay for the new show. Looking forward to them releasing periodic behind-the-scene photos to get us excited. Behind-the-scene photos? Teasers. You think we're going to see a lot of them? I I, I think we'll, we'll By the way, the it, teaser. Is, does anybody know about the Twitter account for um, Nick Meyer's dog? What? Have you seen this? <laughs> I'm dead serious. Look, I don't even know where to go with that. I don't even know if it's official though, and that's what I need to find out. Is that there's and and I'm gonna search for it now. Nick Myers dog. Um if you call Nick Myers your dog, you got it all backwards. It's God. That is true. Is it? He ha- it's his I wanna say it. Is he that there is somebody find it for me. Um, and I need to know if it's a legit account because it's pretty funny. It sounds like, because that's where it seems like they're getting a lot of the leaks His dog is from the, the writer's room on his dog is because his dog's in the writer's room. And I'm like, oh, just I'm wait till the dog this. figures out how to work a camera. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> and his seriously. dog and the dog from the baked beans ah, get Stella, together. Star Trek dog. That's what it is. Okay. Here, I'm going to post it in the copy. And there we go. Da-da, 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 okay, go. Um, <clears throat> I'm Nick Meyer's dog. I go to Star Trek Discovery Writer's Room every day. I make sure they keep working, and I also go for walks and nap on the floor. Los Angeles, California, and Toronto, Ontario, and the account was created in September 2016. And it's just really cute. It's Star Trek stuff. But um, it's it's... The replicator and um, transporter are totally different. I'm a German shepherd, and even I know that. (laughs) So I don't know if it's a – I don't know if it's like, you know, Nick or maybe Kirsten or somebody having fun posting stuff as Nick Meyer's dog. I think it's adorable. If only dogs were as straightforward as Klingons. I mean, open hailing frequencies or initiate a mating ritual, but stop sniffing my butt. I'm sorry. I don't know. So I started following Stella Star Trek dog and uh, it's pretty funny. I don't know. We'll see. Um, there's that. All right. Nick, do you have a topic? I'm sorry. I'm checking out this Twitter yeah. account. It's pretty funny. It's cute. I mean, you, you, you get it. Even if it's not real, you get some really fun um, memes and posting and Star Trek news and, um, you know, just Just general Star Trek fun with it. So it's really cute. I need more Star Trek stuff. Product news. What's this, Mikey? 
I don't know what, what this is. is. What? I need to check it out. Complete sets on the way for or for um video of what? Complete series DS9 DVDs. Voyager Enterprise. Oh. Yes. But they're regular. Okay, so the regular DVDs. Got it. Well, I'm sure they're just repackaging the complete yeah, series. Yeah, set. from the season, you can get them all all together now. Oh, and in one big it's thing. Nice. Yeah. Like that Battlestar Galactic collection I have. And it's also yeah. the Blu-ray, so... Yeah, exactly. For Enterprise. Oh, for Enterprise. Because it was filmed in high depth. Is it in, like, a cool box? Yeah. They haven't done... They're nice. I don't have Enterprise on Blu-ray, but I don't really need it because I have upscaling on my um, on my Blu-ray player, what and it was upscaling? filmed in high depth, so it looks great. Oh, it takes DVD and it upscales it to as close to Blu-ray really? as you can get. I have not heard of that. The, the actual machine does it. Color yeah. me intrigued. <laughs> no, it's 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 kind of faking it, but when it's already filmed in high def, it, right. it looks great. You wouldn't know. You would you wouldn't let's put it this way, it's not worth the extra money for me to go out and buy a whole new set of Blu-rays yeah. when I have DVDs that look great. Um and uh, Oh what? goodness great. Oh, let me offer my condolences to the lovely Kajiro Vance. Oh. Tough tough day for him yesterday, I'm sure. Oh, it was, but, but well know, fought. Is he in the chat well room? fought. Yeah. They were so beat up. Yeah. This year. The Seattle Seahawks were so beat up. And they, they how many more injuries did they sustain yesterday? Three? It was crazy. It was like they they were down to like you know, the the football guy, the the the, 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 water, the boy. water boy. Well, here's my prediction, which means it won't come true. It'll be Kansas City mm-hmm. and Atlanta in the Super Bowl, just for something different. But who's going to beat the Patriots? You really think that's going to happen? They're not superhuman. They no, lost they're not. To Miami this year, okay? <laughs> I think it was just because he was having a hard day. It, it, they're not so... Oh, hi, I'm... hi son. <laughs> Don't why, forget, if you want to talk sports, too, you can listen to the O Sports Show. Who, what, when? <laughs> this doesn't make you Green Lantern, Joe. That's cute. <laughs> um, so, Nick, did you have a topic that you wanted us to discuss today? You had Lack some good ones Native the other Americans day. in Star Trek. That's a good one. Go. The only... I said huh? go. Go. Well, yeah, there was a lack of Native Americans in, Were there in Star any Trek. Were at all? In the animated Just, series, there, there was one. The only ones I can think of in the, the live were the ones that Wesley... Yeah, when they talked about how horrible the Federation still was. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Chakotay. Thank of... you. Wow. Oh, uh, Chakotay. You, you know what? I... Thank you for saying that. And let's just say this. How badly written was the character yes. when we didn't even remember that the first officer was? The, the thing that bothered me... And, and of course, now that I'm learning more as I work with uh, uh, Native American tribes is, you know, they chickened out. The writers chickened out on making Chakotay a epic that already exists and explored that tribe's right. history, background, spirituality, everything. Because trying they to make him it. an amalgam of tribes they watered him down. Huh? Yeah. Kwanzaa did because Kwanzaa pulls from like ten different things. I, yeah, and it and it was made and Kwanzaa is admittedly a holiday created by a woman just to get people to come together and talk about their African heritage. But yes, you are correct. Why do we say African and not Kenyan? Why do we say African and not right? We say Irish and German. That's true. You just throw them all into one. They don't say European. Of a continent, huh? Yeah, they don't say European. No, we say Irish. We and, say German. We say Italian. Moroccan is far Moroccan different than is than, than uh, Somali. I can tell you that. Absolutely. So, you know, if if we're going, that's what I liked about Uhura. That she was right. She was. Um, oh, what's the language she speaks? I'm so Swahili. my brain just went right out the door. Swahili. So that's South Af- that comes from the South African region, correct? Um, I might be wrong sure about that. I don't know. And it's just, um, you know, why not have people be specifically proud of the actual country that they're coming this, from this in Star Trek? 
Maybe it's Russia. No. They made Sulu an all Asian instead of just why couldn't he be Filipino or Chinese or Japanese or something? You know, they do it in the books. That's what I like. Somebody's from someplace. Mike. Just no. Yes. Mikey? Yeah. What's your opinion on that? On on specific specificity of of origin. God damn Matthew Anderson. I think Thank you, Matthew Anderson. I I I pretty much agree. I mean, everyone is from somewhere, and it would have been nice to get a little bit more specific. But at the same time, maybe in in that time frame, Earth is isn't broken up into s- small country like regions. Um, isn't it? Wasn't it like because uh, in in First Contact Day that we got a feel that. Uh, the geopolitical landscape had had to evolve, and there were larger um, regions that people were were known from, or known to to originate from. You know, um, what was it that uh, Cochrane and and uh, and what's her name? I can't think of her name right now. Uh, Lily. 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 When they were talking about uh, you know the Eastern Coalition or whatever it was, and you know, so it, it, I, I think you know by this point in history, future history, that the geopolitical landscape has evolved, and and Asia is a lot, uh, you know, um, a larger area than just Japan or just China. Um, China. I would, I, I would actually, I, well, I understand where you're coming from on that, Mike, and I don't necessarily disagree with you with regards to leadership or governmental oversights and how that, how those things might change in the future. Um, I would still say that regionally people would still consider themselves to be from a specific I'm locale. from Jakarta. Japan's I'm still Japan. Because if you look at, our, at the actual history... No, I'd say Japan. But. If you look at the actual history, China and Japan ruled over Korea for so many years, but they never lost their Koreanness, even though the Korean language was outlawed. But they never lost that. I think people will always have that in them. I mean, here's a perfect example is the EU, right? You've got the European Union kind of a centralized set of government and governmental rules. And then you have a set of city-state kind of things where you've got Germany and France and Spain. They're still Spanish. They're still French. You're still German. You're still Swiss. You know, you're just, I would, I, I, um, people, st- Part of even, the even, uh, speaks English. well, that is true. <laughs> We still laugh about that. It's like, how did you end up with an English accent? We went to boarding school. Because he went to boarding school <laughs> in London, yes. He's a proud Frenchman who has a very thick English accent. And, you know, Roddenberry, I'll, I, have to, I have to give Roddenberry crap for that because he was like, well, because we'd all lose accents by that point. I'm like, okay, there is a load of bullshit there. That is a load of bullshit. I don't care if it's 400 years down the line. I don't care if it's 600 years down the line. They're still going to be... If it's Georgia ever loses his accent, I'm out. It's his translator that had the British accent. Yeah. <laughs> he oh, so you're saying French that Picard is speaking French yes. all along? Interesting. <laughs> He's speaking French all the time, and his translator has just got a heavy British accent. <laughs> Come on. Interesting. That's all, that made sense to me. So then is Alyssa speaking... <laughs> Uh, Japanese or Chinese or whatever she is? Sure, why not? <laughs> Just whatever. I like it. Whatever. And that you have, like, is there, like, a little setting? Is there, like, a little accent it's, it's setting? Like, it's like Translator? GPS, you know, you get to pick what language you want, you, you know, your directions in. You just download a new <laughs> patch. You know, a new, a new, a new uh, voice. <laughs> I love it. I think that's funny. And you know what? We'll run with that. I'll run with that. Why not? I I'll dare you. That, that Uhura at the next Uhura convention Swahili you're at, the whole time. and Patrick yep. Stewart's there, I dare you to say, since Picard was French and you have an English accent, was it just the translator that was making it like that? <laughs> Oppelganger, if you're listening, that one's on you. <laughs> oh, hi, Maximo. How are you doing, honey? 
Hi, Maximo. Sorry. Kushmanzada said that Maximo came running into the office and said, Hi, Aunt Terry. Hi, Aunt Maximo. Um, it was fun to see you guys, by the way. It was fun. I, I think the one world government really should be run by Harlan Ellison. <laughs> Nobody would fuck with us. Hold on. I just got a yep. restraining order. <laughs> Instantaneous mm-hmm. restraining order. <laughs> um, no, I think it, it's when you, you brought up the idea of, of Native Americans, and, and as much as I appreciate what they kind of tried to do with Chakotay, I, again, would have uh, really would have appreciated it more if the writers had just actually done a little research and instead of trying to make an every an every Indian the rubber tree a, people, I mean, really, it, just to make you know to tribe and go with it because the history is the history is the history, and and sh- do you think though that they would that, that maybe there was a fear of well why didn't you choose this tribe or why didn't you choose this tribe? Yeah, but. Why is that one more important than us? No, I think that, no, I think that at the end of the day, I think, you know, they just, they wanted to be able to, you know what it was is that the, the, the writers wanted to be able to pull from all of, all of them Uh and say, okay, well, he gets a spirit animal, which is this. And then he gets to do this tattoo, which is Maori, which is, you know, it was like, let's throw them all into one big bucket. It really was. It really was. Yeah. Because you wouldn't have an Irish guy wearing lederhosen and, you know, making spaghetti and meatballs and drinking French wine. Yeah. Well, that, yeah, they would. Yes. (laughs) And that's the thing is that there's still, there's still nationalities. And, And the one thing that I'm hoping that Discovery kind of moves forward with is kind of dealing with those city state or those nationalities not necessarily as nationalities of earth but more like nationalities of the federation meaning let's get into some of those planetary um into some of that planetary political discussion i think that would be fun that's what i was really hoping i would see more and more out of enterprise and it was starting to get really good that way exactly nationalities of culture i mean what i want to know more about um you know the especially in Discovery at this point in time, 10, 10 years before. Um, for the cage, right? Be, yeah. That, you know, you're dealing with a federation that's still relatively new, made up of Vulcans and Andorians and Tellarites. And they're just learning how to each other with each other. And right. They're just, just to get I over. Would, and I would love to learn more about those planets, cultures, other, you know, they got a lot from Vulcan, but not, just think how much more they could do in that regard. Let's, let's, let's have fun. I, you know, I wish Larry I mean, Nemechek is here because on. I have a, a, something that I thought of the other day. In, in very hmm. early episodes, didn't they say that Spock was the only Vulcan serving in Starfleet? I don't, I don't remember that he was the first one to. He was the first one. Well, was he the first one to enter the academy? I don't know, but I, I don't remember really early on. Like Charlie X or the Cage or something like that, you know, something really early, where they said that he was the only one. But then later on, they lost that ship full of Vulcans to the the, the space amoeba. I I think I think it I could be wrong, but I think it was in regards to the cat the academy. Um, and the academy was still a relatively new thing by the time and Spock both graduated. Um, I think there was only, you know, a couple or a few classes that had graduated prior to them, but I could be incorrect on that. And I, and I really can't think that they would have, well, I don't know, maybe, maybe Berman and Braga did ignore it if it did exist or if that, that idea did exist to have to Paul on the enterprise in enterprise. Well, remember she wasn't in Starfleet originally. True. Neither was Archer. Yeah. No, Archer was. <laughs> Earth Starfleet, right. but not the Federation, yeah. right? So there's no, there was no Federation. Oh, so I, maybe they're making that distinction. I really need to see a picture of T'Pol with long hair. <laughs> Matthew Anderson. Mirror universe. Um, yeah, I don't know. We'll have to see. If, if you know, I don't remember. Again, uh, I'm not the big TOS 
expert. I just I'm really not. I just something about that, about Spock being that, uh, again, that unique. You know what I mean? Well, uh, I... I in reading some of the the Enterprise uh, novels, I mean, you get this idea that the um, all the Federation at this time, you know, this is like Rise of the Federation. In the early days, there were though we were one, we're starting to become one big happy family. Um, there was still a lot of division in, in terms of of who who did what and what ships were you know like for instance the Andorians that they they still piloted their own ships um there wasn't a lot of integration in terms of Andor crew on Starfleet ships there wasn't a lot of that um there be, you, well, but wouldn't that be the Andorian ships had specific roles that they performed which was more on the defensive side um the Vulcan ships piloted with all Vulcans they uh they went on more scientific endeavors whereas humans they they were the explorers they were the ones out there in the forefront figuring, you know basically sticking their dicks in in, in holes seeing what what, what pops up <laughs> weren't they the see but i'm talking now about tos time frame wouldn't that kind of be so we're one big happy federation but yet we're still going to be by that time, you expect that things are starting Integrated. to integrate a lot yeah. better, and I think it's be- maybe maybe. In, I mean, in the obvious discovery, answer is, the maybe, obvious answer is is because at the time, of, you know, 1967, they just didn't have the money to be able to have aliens except for yeah. Spock that's on the true. ship. Well, yeah, that's true. it. Could also be that that uh, this uh, discovery could have could be the first attempt. At bring everyone together into a cohesive, you know, uh, crew, so to speak, and maybe things don't work out exactly as they're supposed to, or that they will in the future. Maybe there's still a lot of, you know, uh, prejudice between various races, a lot of jealousy, or whatever, you know, uh, whatever, you know, can can divide people, and and we kind of. Perhaps I mean perhaps that 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 that's what we're going to be seeing. I w- it's something I would like to see is how how they can work together and and hopefully um, be able to come together. But I can see a lot of tension, and some th- some people are going to get butt hurt. Well, I don't disagree with that, which is part of the reason why I really liked the the fall novel so much was because it explored the fact that there still was so much. Yeah. you know, political upheaval amongst, even amongst the founding members. Of well, the I, I just think it's funny that the aliens that they did have on like the enterprise, like number one or, or God, I hate to use the name Garth of Izar. Yeah. They, they were all human. Human. Yeah. Why? Matt, are, are you seeing what Matthew Anderson's posting? Or are you getting? Yeah. The, no, they're, they're not. Yeah. Coming. The pictures are um, not. I think, not it, I think, I think, there's information missed from the link that's provided oh. from Logan. Oh, okay. Because I just didn't know if it was on my side or... No, it was us too. Well, you know, that's, again, that's really interesting is that they are, you know, this idea that, uh, you know, why is it so human-centric in TOS? Well, we when... know why. I mean... Yeah, and again, it was money. It had I- I'm sure. I, look, I, I have been and one to rail exploring... on the, the, the uh, what is it, the... Um, rewriting of the history you know in the 70s and 80s to make gene seem like he was doing this thing but had they had the budget i have no doubts we would have seen you know because they tried More. they tried to do things to to show that and you're right had had um ex- well we know had a well, very limited limited budget yeah. and if you looked at the animated series you can actually see how how much more diverse the crew actually was. And one of the, the really great things, and if you're not following on tour.com, Keith DeCanado is doing a rewatch of the animated series. Um, and it's a lot of fun. But one of the really great things um, about the animated series is the aliens are really alien. Uh, yep. And, and, you know, it, it, keep in mind it's 1972, was it? 73? And Filmation... Filmation was not known for their spending of money, but the the ideas and the concepts of the aliens in it are really, really fun. You know, 
the plant people or the the and the uh, the Zinthi are coming up. Yeah, from the slaver. Oh, the Kazinti. You know that would. Yeah, Mike, you've been doing. I can say I I've, I've only seen like three or four episodes, but how many are there total? Twenty something, right, Mike? Um, mm-hmm. I want to say there's like twenty something. Yeah. Oh, it was no, two I'm, seasons, okay. wasn't it? It, it? It's about twenty something episodes, I think. Uh, can you guys hear me? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So there, there, there's a couple. There, there's a couple done, um, at least. Um, let me see. Uh, Native Americans we were talking about earlier. Uh, Dawson Walking Bear. Uh, he, 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 he was Coman- Comanche. That was uh, on a bridge for the episode "How Sharper Than a Serpent's Tooth." So, okay, well that's cool. Chakote wasn't the first, you know, Native American in uh, Starfleet, uh, or well, that we saw in Starfleet. If you watched animated series, you know that they're in Starfleet and TOS. I just put a link in the chat room there for Tour dot com, the latest uh, rewatch that. Keith did. He's up to the Infinite Vulcan. Very cool. I'll have to take a, a look at those because he he writes a blog after yes. each one, correct? And one thing that I love about it is Christopher L. Bennett in the comments section always chimes in as well. And they've had some good back and forth, especially about episodes that they one liked and the other didn't. And um, Christopher L. Bennett is so smart. You know, Keith... Keith He's ridiculously smart. Yeah, Keith is... is <laughs> so smart but it's almost like um and I, leonard from big bang theory talking with um i'm trying to think of somebody who's like incredibly pop culture smart and stuff like that so you've got the two different view you know the two different uh, uh what's the term i'm thinking perspectives yeah perspectives and uh, yeah, it's 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 really fun, and you can see where Christopher L. Bennett will say, "Oh, in my uh, uh, the, the DTI novels, I pulled from this, and I pulled from this, and the, even from this animated episode." So yeah, shout out to Keith DeCanado because his he's also doing a Batman sixty six. All right, on. Uh, there's a little background so, yeah. information on uh, Dawson Walking Bear uh, that I'm just reading about. He was uh, originally conceived for the ultimately undeveloped episode the patient parasites uh by dc fontana so he the undeveloped an undeveloped episode? yeah so this was supposed to be i suppose a, a tos episode or an original series episode that never quite made it oh that's interesting maybe if there had been well, a fourth season know? but uh yeah. so even back then they were they, you know, they, they were trying to be inclusive of native americans as well well, and I like the fact that they actually made him a specific tribe. Once again, I think that's pretty cool. Yep. Instead of kind of trying to pull from all of them and make them into this watered down version of everybody, and like as again, as much as I appreciate the effort that they made, I still think you know what it was. It would have been better served if they had just said he was. Uh, oh, Terry, just or, a quick thing. Yeah, I'm putting something in the chat room mm-hmm. right now that I okay. actually had to stop and lay down after I saw. Oh, oh boy. The first photos. Okay. <laughs> oh, I saw oh that. Oh my God. I did see that. The Jessica it's Jones. It's the Defenders. Uh, Luke Cage, Daredevil, yeah. Jessica Jones, and Iron Fist. Iron Iron Fist? Is yeah. that it? Okay. <sighs> cool. Did, now, have you watched any of the Netflix series, Terry? Nope. Can't say that I have. I, Mike, I know you have. Don't you think she should? Because you talk about character. I think she most certainly. I mean... I can understand why she doesn't because it, it is that ultra violent that she does not like. Jessica um, Jones wasn't. Jessica Jones was a mind fuck. That was a mind fuck. But uh, and Luke Cage, <laughs> Luke Cage wasn't really violent. Luke Cage was, Luke Cage was a really kind of psychological study. The, the, it had it had it had its moments of, of violence, but um, yeah, but yeah, yeah but Terry, I, I watched, no I watched different Luke than Cage say, during new year's you want to know how bad it was this week for me you guys okay you know how much i adore eddie mcclintock right doesn't okay so he's been on a new show called shooter on not showtime usa on usa network and this is a show that's been going on all season and he has played a um homeland security 
officer, right? Working with, or I should say not necessarily working with, but trying to work with um, the FBI type of thing. Well, his his character got killed off last week. Big spoiler. Sorry. But his character got killed off last week in the most horrific way. And I can't even tell you. Posted a video of the of of the filming of the scene. So the video he posted wasn't the scene as it was filmed. It was actually the scene as kind of somebody had a a, a camera, like a, a cell phone camera, and filmed the filming. Does that make sense? Oh, so it was one of those like ultra realistic uh, because it was no, all like cell a back, phone Yeah, it was like a it was behind the scenes. It was a behind-the-scenes video of his death scene right. being filmed. Oh, so you got to see, like, okay. the director, the camera guy and stuff? or You got to see the camera oh, okay. guys. You got to see the boom operator. And you and you saw the, the perspective from behind the person who ended up killing him. Okay. No, he ends up dying because he fucking cut off his arm. And the blood is splurting. Blah, blah, blah. And I, like, I know it's fake. <laughs> but... Eddie's such a good actor. I was, it didn't matter that the director was in front of it. And Eddie's such a good actor that I was like, oh my God, he's dying. You're an idiot. I was horrified. I was horrified. It was awful. I was like, I'm so glad I didn't see this on, uh, you know, on the actual show. Because I would have been messed up. Because it's just, the, the, I was talking with the Ferrises this week. And we figured out what it is that I have a problem with when it comes to certain types of violence and how they're portrayed. And the problem is if I can empathize with the victim, I'm fucked. I can't do it. I feel the pain. I empathize with the victim. I, I, I just, I cannot separate out that, that stuff. So if I tend to watch something that's hyper violent and yet stylized, meaning that I don't really care about anybody in the film, or I really hate the person who's about to get off, or I don't see the actual effect. Like the perfect example was Lucy Liu in um, Kill Bill. Right. Right. So she slices off the guy's head, right? <laughs> Stylized. Hated him. Didn't empathize with him in any way, shape, or form. The movie Alien, it, you're okay with that. Oh, the Alien. Yeah, I've seen it. It freaked me the hell out. It's a horror movie. Right. It's not. It's a suspense film. Yeah. And Aliens, the second one, was fucking awesome because it's an action yeah. flick. So you're okay with that? Yeah. But yeah. something like a movie based on the Manson family. If I can, if I, if I make any sort of connection with the victim, I'm done. I can't do it. I can't, I have to get up and walk away. Isn't that weird? That's what we figured it out. The Ferris has helped me figure that out. So I guess for me, it would depend on what's going on in the show in Jessica Jones or Luke Cage. If, if they're up on bad guys, chances are, I wouldn't have a problem. The problem I would have is if they're showing the violence that the bad guys do, Um, then I have to get up and walk away. I'll say in Daredevil, there's only one time, Mike, would you agree that that really happens? And that's when Kingpin with the dude with the car door. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm not sure if there's other ones, but yeah, yeah, that one. one, But that you didn't so much see, you just heard, which is actually worse. Oh. Jessica Jones is, um, it's it, it's psychological, Terry. It's all psychological. He's it, it, um, what's his name? Doctor Who. Um, David Tennant. He's he's it's a total mind fuck because he can he can control the mind, and she's that. It's really really that's what it is. It's all psychological. Yeah, but but it also deals with with, with a lot of subject matter that I think uh, it makes a lot of people really uncomfortable i mean the whole idea of, of being forced to, to do things that you don't want to do right. and some of them being sexual uh just would yeah really... see i would probably have some now, problems Luke with cage that cage is more of yeah. a like a mafia show um because he's against kind of an organized crime but uh alfrey woodard goes she does something that even i went well damn i didn't expect that that was pretty violent and coming from her, it's really awesome. <laughs> um, so yeah, they all have their moments, but for the most part, it's it's superhero violence. Um, I think Daredevil is the the worst of all because it is just straight up ass kicking. 
and he's a hero who's constantly getting his ass kicked. Okay, yeah. With the Punisher, I, would probably the, say I think you would true. like the Punisher part of the series because it's it's really a character study of a guy who's just been pushed way too far. Interesting. I guess it, it, I would have to. I would have to. I can tell you right now that uh, Daredevil's probably not for me. But the the um, worst part of, for that Terry is Daredevil yeah. is so intricate that I think you would love the characters and the story. Well, here's a question, and kind of bringing it back to Star Trek. Um, what's your anticipation for how they're going to deal with um, violence in the new show? I think they're going to do it like Netflix is doing with the Marvel series. So they're going to up the game. Yeah. And I wouldn't be surprised to hear cursing either. I'm not saying to there hear will what? be, but I wouldn't be surprised. Cursing? That doesn't, again, that doesn't necessarily bother me. I absolutely, I don't expect them to drop the F-bomb all the time. No. But I definitely hear, I expect to hear a lot of shit. Yeah. I really do. Because I have always thought of people in, the, that I always thought of people regardless, you're going to have an expletive that you're going to use. I would love to see, you know, different aliens having different ex expletives. That would be really the geek, funny. The total geek in me wishes to hear yeah. frack in Star Trek. I know. <laughs> I know. But well, maybe. Oh, fuck. Once or twice. Shazbot? <laughs> Shazbot. Nanu Nanu. Wouldn't that be great if they met an alien race and the first thing they said was Nanu Nanu? <laughs> That'd be stupid shit. It'd Giant be so dumb, like but it would be funny. <laughs> <laughs> suspenders. You know that for a holodeck episode, that'd Rainbow be really suspenders. funny. Suspenders. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I make it so. I know that they talked make about, it so. Yeah. Well, again, I wouldn't necessarily. Uh, I don't necessarily have. You know, again, there's that limit. There's there's a limit of how much I can handle when it comes to certain types of violence. I do not mind, however, the idea that they're going to uptick some of the violence in order, as long as it's story appropriate the, okay. for Star Trek. So Matthew Anderson put a photo or a gif in from Daredevil season two with the Punisher. And after he like a bunch of guys attack him in prison. So if you saw somebody that looked like that, say after a, a battle in discovery, would that bother you? Probably not. I mean, in, if it was showing, again, it was to me the one thing that the one thing I always talked about, and I will always say, is that I don't think that DS Nine went far enough. We never saw the battles. We never saw the blood. That right. you know, that we never saw how how horrible war is. You know what I think the best example you can that do we saw war. was in not what? even DS Nine was Sick Bay in the Wrath of Khan. Remember, McCoy had blood all on him. Thank and that's why I was like, thank you. I mean, Crusher was she was always sterile. Well, that's because she's Beverly Crusher, and she she glows with the light of an angel. <laughs> if medicine in Star Trek got too clean, surgery is surgery. I'm sorry, they're gonna when you've got somebody's arms that are blown off from torpedo hits. You're going to lose arms. You've got to do a fix. It's not like something you can pull out a little, you know, tool splinters, for and go, oh, you're all healed. Splinters and hair cuts do not exist in the future. <laughs> it's a good Seriously, point, Sun. Right? Sun said Pulaski was always bloody. She So bloody she wore red surgery ground, gowns. <laughs> well, Terry, you know that's why Daredevil wears red, right? Is it really? Yeah, so no one can know that Because it's just blood turned red black. We all know that. Come on. Red leather is what he's kind of yeah. wearing. Red leather. Oh, so it washes off easy. Yeah. What a guy. And he's blind. I know. See, I think you would like it too because there's also... I watched the first episode. Yeah, there's also a lot of symbolism in there with his Catholic upbringing and everything. It's a, it's a very... <laughs> I'm glad that Star Trek is going to be on the CBS All Access for the same reason I'm happy with what Marvel's been doing on Netflix. They're allowed yeah. to delve deep into things. I hope so. The same I really do that hope Supergirl so. Girl actually moving to CW was a good thing because being on CBS, they had too much of an audience they had to serve demographically. Whereas on CBS, they can narrow that. I mean, on CW, they can narrow that down. They were serving too many audiences 
on CBS. Too many sense. masters, if you will. Yeah. Yeah, I I agree. I I thoroughly agree. I'm I'm still holding out a lot of hope for this show. I know that Brian Fuller isn't involved, and there's some back and forth as to what really was the reason for his departure. Although, to be honest with you, I really do think the fact is is that he was pulled in too many directions and CBS wanted commitment and he couldn't right. do it. And can you blame CBS for wanting to have somebody just commit to a long-term show? I, I know I don't blame them. And the fact is, is Kurtzman's the executive producer already. And maybe there was some conflict there. I don't know. I really don't know. And I kind of don't care. The fact is, Fuller gave us what he could, and I'm happy with what he gave us. I know I'm going to be happy with what he gave us. And like he said, his phone's there if they need him. That you know, but I trust Kirsten. I trust Nicholas Meyer. I, I do. I trust yeah. these people implicitly. Look, she, um, what she did with the Voyager novels, she made me like a Voyager. That's true. <laughs> you know what? I didn't even think about that, but you're yeah. right. Yeah. Yes, son. Spock and McCoy did surgery on a torpedo. Um, Wait a minute. Oh, in Rasa Khan. What? There's, yeah, and then there's still, McCoy there's still also reacting. did surgery on a surgery torpedo on a with torpedo in. with a uh, hot chick they never acknowledged again. Carol Marcus. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, so, yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be very interesting. And I really do hope that they kind of deal with the I'm seriousness sorry, Star Trek of torpedo surgery on you. Oh, in uh, undiscovered, undiscovered country. country. You're right. You're right. Um so I do. I hope they kind of tick it up a little bit. And not and not because I want violence for violence sakes, but I want violence to have meaning and to be acknowledged and to say, you know, look, if you're going to be dealing with the situation of war, war isn't clean. It never has been. Which at least and it never will be. dealt with. Yes. Oh my God. I loved Enterprise. I loved Enterprise. I loved it. You know, and Phlox was awesome. <laughs> Genocidal madman. <laughs> so I don't know. I've, I've, I've always loved the way that's part of the reason why I love the novels so much is because the novels were able to address the types of things that weren't done in the show. They dealt with the politics. They dealt with the violence, but with the, you know, the outcome, the, the sick bays were bloody or gross or, you know, not to say that they were says, Terry, don't you have to admit that sometimes violence does not make sense? Absolutely. Wait, wait I don't. Uh, and I there, just said there, many there, times there, it doesn't. Said, not yeah. sure what you mean. Do you agree or not agree is my question. There are times that violence is gratuitous and not done for character growth or to advance the story. Would you say that Tarantino, as violent as stuff is, it usually makes sense? Because his characters are steeped in violence. But no, I'm saying, though, he's a case where you could say, look, you had to have it more for the... Yeah. Well, he only writes characters that are steeped in violence. So all of his shows have their... Right. ...that live in and among this hyper-violent craze. I still need which to see why, last two movies. Which is why I don't, um, you know, I don't watch a ton of his films. Well, did you... Th- but what was the one but, that I saw that... Oh, uh, Inglorious Bastards. Did you see that? I would not be able to get through that. Why? Alan watched it. Oh, no, Alan watched it. He told me. He told me. He goes, no, Terry. Because, again, evil people doing really horrible things to people who could, could be considered nice oh, but or see, innocent. Hold on. Oh, I can't do it. No, the evil person in that movie, it was all mind fuck. It was the good guys committing the violence. Right, yeah. And Alan just told me, he goes, nope, it's not a Terry film. And I trust my husband. No, I, I know, I know. Yeah, I don't, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, no, Inglorious Bastards, I knew I wouldn't be able to watch. Uh, it's a um, shame because I think you would love the acting in it. Like, absolutely love. The first, like, ten minutes are so suspenseful, and it's just two people talking. Well, here's the thing. I would probably read the book. Now, did you see Mad Max Fury Road? No. I think you'd be okay with that. Probably, I, the Mad Max sad. films on their own. You, I would, I would be sad. Yeah. Well, I don't mind I, well, sad. I, I would be sad if, yeah, if what they do with Discovery was extreme enough to turn you off. I don't it. think they'll do that though. I really do think that they're going to want to bring in younger viewers. I don't think Nick Meyer or Kirsten or any of them would do that, Mike. Uh-uh. 
I really don't. I don't think they're going to risk the possibility of having teenage no. viewers. They're not going to turn really Star don't. Trek into Oz uh-uh. or The Sopranos or anything like that. They, I, that's not I don't even happen. think they're going to go as far as Battlestar Galactica. I think it'll be like Arrow or one of those. That's cool. Arrow's the darkest of the, 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 the superhero shows. Or, or Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And you're good with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I think oh, like no that. no problem there. Which, you know, is still, you know, has its moments, but... Right, I, I, right. You know, I think that's a good... Babylon 5 did that well. Did it? Yes. Mike, did you ever see Babylon 5? Yes. Okay. Would you agree, I'm Mike? I'm the only one that hasn't. The Mimbari, the, 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 the Mimbari War and the Shadow Wars, there were there were consequences and, and all of that, and, and definite, like, the surgery and all of that, you know... The, doc, the poor doctor was overwhelmed. That's interesting. I'm, I, I just, again, you don't have to show me blood. You just have to show me that something happens, right? Mm -hmm. um, again, in, in DS9, what bothers me is that you've got, you've got this kind of far away, glossy look at what happens because it's so detached. Even, even when it comes to TNG, they have one of the most amazing massacres that occurs at Wolf 359. And the only thing you get are the floating corpses of ships. You get a touch of what happened at Wolf 359 during the pilot of DS9. Right. A touch. That's what I wanted more of. The pilot of DS9 should have been how DS9 was through the whole damn show. Get it? That's kind of what I'm looking for. Is the there was a reason Cisco was who he was, and it arose out of what he experienced at Wolf Three Five Nine. And not to, not that even to mention what Kira went through during the occupation. Through. Exactly. Exactly. Again, I think that was a process and, of budget. And it, it, and that's, and that's why I'm like, okay, I can forgive them for that. But now we're in a point in a, where they already have already admitted that the show is seventy percent paid for. Without it even aired. being, you know, aired. That's amazing. They, sh they have the budget now. You have the budget. You have the means. You have the platform from which to broadcast that doesn't limit you in the same way you would be limited on your own network. Have fun with it. Do what you couldn't do with DS9 that you should have. That's what I'm saying. It's a, they're dealing with a, a geopolitical, you know, they're dealing with an, a situation 10 years before um, the original series that creates a unique opportunity to deal with some pretty heady, heady stuff and still showing. And here's the thing that is also going to be important and still showing that people try very, very hard to, to stick to their guns when it comes to the means of the Federation, that you can, you can still be adherent to your core beliefs and win the day against evil. As sad and uh, as that is, that's one thing that I think is missing from TV today. With the exception of maybe Arrow, the Flash, and the Marvel stuff to a degree. You know, a superhero stuff. Why not make it a superhero thing? Yeah, Death by Computer. The Taste right, of Armageddon. The, the, TOS, the, the Taste of Armageddon, right? The TOS episode where, where war is too clean. Well, that was the way it was getting for the whole damn show. You're dealing well. T TNG was different because they weren't in wartime, right. but DS Nine and and dude. Taste of Armageddon was another two planets. Yeah, Matthew Anderson says you want realism. Look to Band of Brothers. Well, trust me, I don't because I I do understand. I have Nick being one of them who loves Band of Brothers. Um, but I can't even get to the first thirty seconds of. Saving Private Ryan. So You're such a woman. There you have it. I am. Ugh. I am. Well, it's not just a woman thing. I'm. You really are. I now, did you see Black Hawk Down? No, I know. Hey, you want to know the last war movie I saw? <laughs> Top Secret with Val Kilmer. <laughs> oh my god! I love, I love that, that movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was actually um, Rogue One. I think Rogue One is oh, a war yeah. movie. Rogue One is Rogue a first One person is a war RPG. movie. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of, so did you like Rogue One, Terry? Oh my god, I loved it. I don't it. want to say anything, I but... I loved it. God damn, she's hot. Yeah. Oh, I loved it. I loved it. Mike, have you seen it yet? Yes, I have. And? It was enjoyable. You okay, Mike? 
Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. Sure. Okay. Now, uh, what's your idea? I'll say this about the ending. I had two thoughts. Well, they couldn't went end any other way. God damn, why did they have to end it like that? Well, well, yeah, because they couldn't end it any other way. Right, but they could have. I mean, it's a big no. galaxy. See, we no. get stuck in the small galaxy syndrome that if they did this, then they have to show up later in X. No, it's a, it's a big galaxy. It wouldn't have meant as much. I, I thought it was, it was. I thought I loved it, um, because you don't know <laughs> if it you. was if it was thirty seconds before episode four or if it was, you know, six weeks before episode right. four. You know, it was it was it, it was just going straight from watching that and going straight into episode four. It was it, almost wonderful, perfect. Yes. Yeah, it, it. You can watch those back to back and be like, "Oh, damn!" Yes, and, and I, I thought that Matthew was Anderson genius. watching Vader be Vader. Oh, yeah. Come on, whose lightsaber didn't extend? <laughs> that almost made up for. No, nothing makes up for Christian Hayden, son, but. You know, it's funny, um, Robert Ray is in the chat room, says, what about Torah, 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 the longest day, Midway, Patton, MacArthur, match? Okay. Um, Can I take that one, Terry? Go ahead, please. Of all of those, the only realistic one is MASH. Agreed. Torah, 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 it's, well, it's aircraft, so it's pretty bloodless. The longest day, great movie. Don't, don't think for a second I'm dissing that movie. It's a phenomenal movie. Um, fucking... Robert Mitchum, uh, I'm not gay, but I'd kiss his hog in that movie. Um, but there's no blood. Midway, same thing. Patton, same thing. MacArthur's a terrible movie. MacArthur is a terrible movie, the one about Inchon. It was made by the Reverend Sun Young Moon. Um, MASH is the only realistic of those um, as far as the, the hell of what they were doing in the, in the surgery. Matthew Anderson, it says MASH was a parody. Um, no. It kind of, MASH is actually it really based wasn't. on the real experiences of Joseph Heller. Yeah. And my father was a surgeon who served as an Air Force in, during the Korean War. All of those things and in that movie happened in different MASH units. In different MASH units. And um, my father was never a MASH surgeon, but boy, did he hear about MASH. <laughs> he was on the other side of it. So every time somebody in a MASH unit sent somebody off to, you know, Seoul, and then from Seoul they went to London or to Lake no. Heath, that's where um, my father was. Terry, he was on the other side of it. They went huh? to Japan. They, well, they, right. They went to Japan, they went to Tokyo, and then from Tokyo, then they got spread apart. So you either went to San right. Francisco or you went over the pole and you got to Lake and Heath. It depended on who had the room. Yeah. Seriously. It was, that's where it was like, you got funneled to where they could take you. Germany. London, it didn't matter. And so my father was on the receiving end of the people who were treated through MASH units. And yeah, they <laughs> he heard the stories. But it, they had their own. They had their own, even at even at the uh at the, the far away mm -hmm. the History um, Channel had a, a, a piece they did about the real MASH units, um, and the people that the book was based on. And if anything, their stories were even more outrageous than what made it into the book and movie. <laughs> yeah, seriously. And yes, way yeah. bloodier. Um, the, the, um, the, uh, oh shit, I just lost my train of thought. Either way, it would be interesting to see it, just on the medical and see that's maybe that's my thing is that you could totally deal with the violent side of it and the medical aspect of it. If you're going to be talking about a doc, you know, just, you know, how to, how does, you know, they deal with the, you just, it's not all bloodless. That's all. And it would be interesting to see. And here's the question for you and for Mike, and this is going to sound really stupid because it's so it's, you're going to think it's so out of left field for this question. I was thinking the other day about medicine in Star Trek and not a topic too dissimilar to this. And I thought to myself, would, would MDs really be the doctors of the future or would veterinarians? <laughs> Well, the vet, vets would have the most flexibility and 
be the most adaptable to what they would encounter in a diverse crew. Um, but um, I, th I think I think uh, it depends on, on era. I mean, if you're looking at it, if you're looking at um, like Enterprise era, I'm surprised that there wasn't a human doctor there. I, I love the fact that there was a the, the, I loved Phlox in that. And he he did have a veterinarian degree. So that did give him a little leg up in dealing with, with un, the unknown uh, races that he encountered. But um, I was surprised to see that that later series didn't have something similar in, in their doctors. If that makes uh, sense. Yeah, it does. Because I was just sitting there thinking about my our veterinarian and the two or three that worked in the veterinarian's office where we take Casey and Chloe and they just announced that they had a veterinarian that um also specializes in exotic uh, birds and reptiles so now they have somebody who can handle certain other species of animals other than dogs cats and the typical domesticated um Horses Not to say and that they, cows and it, well, that, and that's the other thing because we live in horse country. There are they. That's the thing is like right now our vets were um, dog, cat, horse, and cattle, and now they're starting because people are starting to move in. They're starting to bring in other domesticated species. So I was just thinking to myself, I'm like, shit. Thinking about it in terms of species, vets would be more qualified to be Federation doctors. Than just MDs, because they have the ability to deal with different types of creatures. I don't know. It was weird. Um, no, um, I, I I agree. I mean, I'm surprised. I mean, in in, in like TNG, we got to see uh, people had pets. And we never actually saw a veterinarian. So it's per perhaps everyone who who went to see Beverly also took their pets there. Um, perhaps, you know, that is a requirement, you know, for, for future uh, uh, doctors and, and for medicine in the future is that you do have to have that broader scope of, of you know, dealing with, with other unique races and, and other unique life forms. Could you imagine how funny that would have been? What a great episode that would have been to have Beverly have to treat Spot. I think that a Klingon <laughs> doctor having to treat Spot. Beverly delivering <gasps> Spot's children. No, a, I think I Nick has it. Me. A Klingon doctor having to, to, to treat Spot. Having a Klingon specialist. A Klingon feline <laughs> Well, that was one thing in Toss that they were way ahead. Remember in Benga? Specialized he was a Vulcan things. specialist. You're right. You're right. He was a Vulcan specialist. Because he had served in Vul ah, on Vulcan. That's right. He did his studying there. I love in Benga. He was. I, I like that continues brought him back. Me too. Speaking of continues, fact, shout out to the crew there and hello Lisa Hansel and my bruises are healing. It's a private joke between her and I. No. Oh, okay. There you go. Well, Mikey. Yes. What kind of announcements do we have? Um, well, earlier you had pretty much covered what was going on with semantic shenanigans. Um, so once again, uh, semantic shenanigans.com, uh, they've got episodes, they've got, uh, blogs and, um, all kinds of fun stuff in the works. So, uh, definitely check them out. Um, Mike, are they going to have the show. wheel of litigation? Wheel that, of litigation. I think that's on the to-do list. I uh, will bring it up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, O Sports Show. They've, they've. I think they released uh, uh, an episode around the the New Year. I'm not sure if they had any others, but definitely check them out if you're if you're big sports fans, because uh, they certainly are. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, that, you know live, what, love, Mike, play. that should be li live, love, their play. tagline. <laughs> Not sure if they're sport if you're sports fans, but they certainly are. The I love sports it. show. I like it. Um, Sorry. Live, love, play. Uh, Ross is still playing video games, but he's <laughs> also. <laughs> <laughs> 
way. That, that there is a lot of, of streaming his gameplay uh, as part of what he does. So, on Twitch, right? Uh, through Twitch, and then I, I think he posts YouTube videos as well. Yeah. Um, so there's always a lot to see there. Um, but also, I think he... I, I don't know if I should be mentioning this, but he's been setting up some partnerships and other agreements and, 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 and whatnot. So so they're, they're oh, no, growing and fine. expanding, so we're very happy that's for great. him. And um, all I'm going to say is congratulations, Pops. Who? Nothing. Congratulations, Pops. I'm not saying nothing else. No, you already voted. Oh, you. <laughs> that, that is going to someone very, 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 very specific. They know, and I know, and we know that we know, so they know. <laughs> All right. Terry, can you do us a favor? Terry? I don't know. I'm sorry, what? Can you do us a favor? What do you mean? There were some questions and confusion regarding your post about STLV. Oh, let me clarify. And some people didn't even see it, so some of the people here okay. may not have seen it. I'm, 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 I have to admit, I made the quote unquote, the kind of stomp down executive decision. And, and it means I admittedly, I didn't talk to Mike or Nick regarding this decision. Um, namely because it it's was a clause just one... in our contract. She can do this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Plus we had the ball gags in, so there was nothing we could have said anyway. That's right. I had the whips out and everything. Um, essentially, the G and we I made the decision this year that the G and T show won't have a formal vendor room presence at Star Trek Las Vegas this year, and the reason why is just because it was so cost prohibitive, um, and and I will be honest and say, also because I'm sick and tired of the lack of customer service I was getting from Creation, um, after experiencing what it was like to be treated as a professional with Read Pop. When we did, and we, when we went to Mission New York, I realized what I had been missing all along, and that was actually being treated as though um, we um, the money mattered. That that my that my paying them money mattered, and so it's in, it was important for me to feel like I wasn't wasting any money. And that's not to say that G and T show won't be there. Um, I'm hoping to kind of be a fan again, maybe even do, um, get, to be honest with you, the media or press passes at, um, Star Trek Las Vegas mean nothing. Um, they they, they mean nothing. So we can still go as fans with general admission tickets and cover it just as well. So because we could leave the table. We can leave. Yeah. We there. We want to see our friends again. We want to. I want to be a fan again. I want to sit and watch some of the panel. I haven't seen a panel in five years. No, I know. So it, it would be really fun for me to just be able to fly <laughs> to Las Vegas, go have fun, cover it for the show, come back home, and but. That also means that it kind of frees up the budget a little bit with regards to the show on the whole. And that means that we'll finally be able to make appearances and or cover other conventions that we've wanted to do for a long time. Nick has always spoken so highly of shore leave. I would love to be able to go to shore leave. Um, I would love to be able to cover Starfest in Denver, which is the convention that both Dayton Ward and Kevin Dilmore MC. I would love to be able to do well, that. Well, one of the things that there we've are... been talking about here is because my wife's family lives in Utah, is going to visit them in September, and me going to Salt Lake City Comic Con. Oh, God, that'd be so much fun. Yeah. And there are, even Mike has talked about how he wouldn't mind being able to cover some of the conventions that are closer to him in California. So that's kind of what we're going to do is we're going to refocus. Um, actually, we're going to spread our focus on convention coverage and say, you know what? There are there are other things that we can do. There's Dragon now, it's not Con. to say that drag. Oh God, could you imagine? Yeah, I would love that. That'd be huge. I would love to be able to cover Dragon Con, but the fact of the matter is, booths are expensive, and I'm just going to come right out with it. Booth last year cost me three thousand dollars. That was just for the booth. That had nothing to do with the rental car, the um, hotel rooms, the food, 
by the time Alan and I were done with it, we we were spending well over seven grand just to get us there to 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 be a focus, you know, to be in the vendor's room. Now, we loved being kind of like a home port for everybody. We really we really loved it. But that's gross amounts of money that could be better spent. Um, we love the fact that our, and, and see, mind you, that's all money that doesn't come from our donors. I don't use our donor money. Our donor money covers our servers and our servers only, baby. Mm. And that's it. Interesting. Everything else is actually coming you out mean of that Alan there's and my people paper. that yeah. don't use their donor money for publicity? <laughs> My truck needs new yeah. tires, and I have to pay for those myself. Uh, you know what? Thank you. My car. Huh? <laughs> um, two weeks ago, Terry? Was it two weeks ago? Yeah, two weeks ago, I was driving home, and everything oh, on my I'm dashboard so lit up like an F-18 getting locked on by a missile. Oh, my God. And white smoke started pouring out from under my engine. <gasps> And so I pulled over to the side of I-70 and called USAA roadside assistance, thank God. And they came and I have now, now the blue book value for my car is $2,000 because it's 12 years old. And to replace the engine would cost either 2500 for a rebuilt engine or 6000 for a new one. Because it's gone. The engine is gone. Mm, so sorry. I could use donor funds to pay for that. But I would kick your ass. But, Terry, that's accepted business practice. No, it's really not. Sure it is. My independent financial review board made up of Cush <laughs> and Woody and Son said so. <laughs> you know, nobody with any outside interest on in the show. <laughs> Even Mike, I can see, I can hear. Kush, I, play I, along, you idiot. Kush. <laughs> Jesus, Kush. My, I, so you can hear my eyes rolling I do. around I in the back totally of my head. I hear your eyes I'm not talking about it's anybody hilarious. in particular, Mike. That would be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no cupcakes here. Oh, too funny. I just, um, I we really do appreciate the support that we've had from all of our fans and our listeners at Star Trek Las Vegas, and we will hopefully be able to see you there this year and um, it just I won't mean, be in the same capacity it, was like it? terry said it was nice that baz and woody and people like that had a place to to put their stuff down because we know how important that is when you're walking around especially when you've traveled the kind of distances they traveled you know yeah yeah it's uh it was just tough and and now for to be honest with you for far less um, output or outlay of personal money. We can we can make appearances at conventions that we've really wanted to cover for a long time. So we do appreciate everybody's support over the past six years um, at Star Trek Las Vegas, and we will see you hopefully this year again uh, for the 30th anniversary of, Star, of uh, Star Trek: The Next Generation. I don't know if I can not see the Empress. Well, you for that the whole thing. three just seconds that I can go. see her every year. Yeah, well, let's just fly there and go. We can split a room. Well, I also have to look at finances. Okay, and see, that's the thing is that y'all know it's very expensive, and and we're just looking at using our money differently. Wisely. Yes, differently this year and much more wisely. So that's the announcement that I had made on the G and T show page uh, a few weeks ago when I realized that. This year, even vacation time-wise, I'm going to be stretched a little thin. Right. So I need to be able to, um, uh, and and it's all part and parcel of kind of our coming back together and being the three of us and just shooting the shit about Star Trek. I have a question. This, please, Mickey. Um, there there was uh, uh, some discussion with, it, during our recent con contract negotiations. There was some discussion <laughs> about... Um, possibly changing the time of the show, the start time of the show. Oh, Did we ever come to a decision on that? And th that we, this is something that our audience should be aware of if there was a change. Yeah, no kidding. Us. <laughs> I would love to be able to postpone this show by one hour. Can we do that, Nick? I will need to talk to you about that because I may be getting a job on the weekends. So <gasps> do we need no. to change the day? But I would be going in at noon. So 
I'd have to leave oh. here. Oh, I'd dude. have to leave here by eleven fifteen. I get it. So, in other words, we can. Well, I just need to see job. If I get the, the job. It's at the comic book store that I I love. Oh, it's really fun. Because That's of cool. the recent vehicular issues and things. Yeah. That may change. Got it. Okay. Well, we will discuss it for right now. Um, next week, we will be on the same same bat time, time same we, bat channel, same bat time, um, and we will. Yes. We want to throw out about somebody who's been a regular on the show and has been a fill in. Um, when one of us has not been able to be here, uh, Black Magnum. Oh yes. Yeah. Um. Everybody knows uh, Black Magnum, who we adore so so he, much. He, he, if we lived closer, he'd be Turk to my JD. And I love him to death. And we received some. Uh, okay. uh, you want me to take it, Terry? Yeah. Would you? Yeah. Um, Magnum's been quiet lately, and. We found out that he was in the hospital and that he was being uh, treated. And like I said, uh, Anthony, that's his real name. Anthony has filled in as a guest host for us. And like when we were out, he, you know, did a lot of things. Um, Anthony, from what we've heard, has been diagnosed with ALS, which is better known as Lou Gehrig's disease. Um, my heart broke huge for that because I love Anthony to death. He is that his laugh is always something that lifted me um, when I had my issues. So we are here for you, brother. Um, I'm going to wear my bow tie every day for you. And I'm going to eat a bowl of Mac and cheese (laughs) just to to piss you off. Wouldn't it be funny? Grilled cheese sandwiches. Wouldn't it be funny if the cure for this was Mac and cheese? What would you do, Anthony? What would you do? <laughs> um, we love you he, so he, he very make, much. Make him a grilled cheese sandwich is what he did. <laughs> <laughs> a grilled mac and cheese sandwich. I will make you. I will make you a grilled cheese sandwich. But we we were uh, floored by this news. Yeah. We love you so very much, my dear, and you just call and yell mm-hmm. whenever you need. All right. Um, sorry to end the show on such a downer. But he's of a, a note. definite Anthony member of the says family. He's keep, he, like he, he Adrian, you know, people that yeah. have filled in and, and been definitely, there. For definitely, definitely a big, big part of the GNT show family. And um, he says he's keeping a positive attitude, and I can see it then in, in his eyes from his picture that he posted that he's trying very hard to do so. Um, we love you. So, son, send him um, that. Yeah, send him. <laughs> see, from the I'm GNT doing it. show. <laughs> From the GNT show. Um, And uh, we will pretty much see you guys next week. It'll be episode 265. And we'll start at the same time next week as always. If any changes do come up as to date or time or day that we decide to do the show, we will, of course, let you know way ahead of time. One thing I think we can agree on is we will uh, always do it live. We won't do it pre-taped or scripted. No, No. We wouldn't last. (laughs) Mikey, thank you so much for everything. I Seriously? did nothing. You did. You always What are you do. talking the about? One, I was going to say, the one thing we need to remind everybody, Mike does, uh, along with Steve in the background sometimes, but he does everything. He does all of the editing, all of the audio, all of the posting, all of the WordPress. Um, we still thank Janet for I her promoted social media Steve, skills. So I must be drunk or something. And you promoted Steve, so thank you, Steve. Well... Do I need to tell the audience what I said about Steve? <laughs> I don't yes, think they can do. handle you being nice. No, I was going to say. 2017, do it. the year where I'm nice to Steve. Yay. Right. Wait um, until he gets and here. We we'll do. see how long that lasts. <laughs> <laughs> but the amount of work that it takes to do one of these shows for Mike is more than most people realize. And once again, we just want to say thank you, Mikey. It is noticed and it is appreciated. Yes. Uh, love you guys. <laughs> uh, All right. I yeah. want I want to hear um, post on our Facebook page, but uh, I want to hear your best impressions of Picard's broken translator. <laughs> love it. I don't, know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying here. Okay? I love it. Send us a voicemail with what you think Picard's broken translator sounds like. There's what no. does make Thank it? You. Yeah. The French make it so. 
or, or uh, doesn't, it doesn't even have to be in French. It could be any language. If it's broken, it's broken. It could be, it could be, you know, speaking. <laughs> oh, you're getting creative and shit. Yeah, it could I be like anything. It. it could be, you know, if, next thing you know, he's in a talking in a southern drawl. <laughs> you know what our audience is going to do? They're just going to go to their TVs and change the Sam. and get the uh, the, the, the foreign dub overs. That's okay. <laughs> I want to. I want to. I want to hear what people come up with. Um, so, give us your best and broken. That's awesome. What a great idea. Translator. What a great idea. Also, don't forget. Send us ask Dayton's, please. Yes. Please, because we really need to harass this man. Yeah, bonus yeah, points if your ask Dayton is, is in a, in a broken tr- car translator voice. I like bonus it. Bonus points. <laughs> Sweet. Um, okay. I think that pretty much does it for today's show. We love you guys so very much. Our, again, our love to Anthony. And, yes. Uh, you just call if you need anything. Any period. You better be period. listening. Yeah. Don't well, make no, me come kick your ass not. now that I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> and Watch that's Pride of the of Yankees. It. Love you. Until next time, live long and prosper. Kapla. What number was this? Joe Lantro, GNT 264. Music for the GNT show is provided by Five Year Mission, Enterprise Blues Band, Warp 11, Andrew Allen, and Rath Thor. The GNT show is a BLB production. Move ahead, walk back to 10. Put a mini skirt on my old man Represent the human race And we make this a happy place To fully go where no man's gone before I think I sang that line once before But I'm not too sure Won't we'll be so happy, can't you see? A zero G Zero G.